Hey everybody, Rob here for Southwest Florida Television. I'm out at Kauaiachobe Animal Preserve with my friend John, the founder of the preserve. John's gonna tell us a little bit about the preserve while we're standing here. I don't know where he went. Where he, oh, he's getting some video. He just never gets enough video of him. <laughs> hey, they love getting they love getting scratched. Here's John over here. What's up, John? Yeah, How like, you doing? So we have uh, Shambe and Subalizar, <laughs> gonna turn 10 in November. This lion is four days older than that tiger, so they were raised together. I kept him in the house, actually, for about six months until that tiger over there started pulling the furniture <laughs> around. Yeah, he'd like, he'd like grab it, the, like the recliner, he'd grab it by the arm and then flip it over and then he'd grab the top of it. Um, so, so, so the day he dragged it out onto the lanai was the day I said, that's it, that's, you gotta go outside. He just pulled it out. Yeah, he just dragged it across I mean, the room massive. and right out the, the, the uh, French doors. People don't realize how big these cats yeah. are until you get right up yeah. to them like this. Yeah. So he did that at six months old. So yeah, you can imagine <laughs> what he can do now. But you know, if you look in the pool here, he has the it's 55 gallon drum. Uh -huh. Okay. Now that a pool of water. Now keep in mind, water is about 60 pounds per square foot. So 55 gallons filled up is pretty heavy. Um, and he picks that. Yeah, up. and he'll pick it up with his teeth and pull it right out of the water. So these uh, incredible, incredibly strong. And they tear that plastic apart. <laughs> um, you know, we do we do buy toys um, occasionally from a, a company called Desert Plastics out west. I think it's in Phoenix. Um, or outside of Phoenix in Arizona, but uh, one of the nice things is they allow us to make them thicker. So I get I buy these big, huge balls. You'll see some in the other enclosures. Right. But we can make the plastic an inch thick because wow, you know these. Uh, I didn't realize they yeah. were that heavy. Oh yeah, they'll just rip. They'll just rip them apart. Any any plastic up to about any plastic up to about a quarter of an inch, the teeth will go right through and rip them apart. Wow. Um, so we literally have to make the plastic about um, uh, 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 an inch, three quarters to an inch. Wow. And they move them around like they're nothing. I know. A, they look, I thought ball, they were just little tiny You get a ball that's about things. an inch thick that's 24 inches in diameter. It literally weighs almost 50 pounds, and they just pop it around. Oh, yeah. Listen to them. Yeah. Yeah. Where are now, you going? Bowland, Bowland donated a bunch of bowling bat, a lot. Bowling, uh, bowling balls? Bowling balls, yeah, yeah. I bet they toss them yeah. around like they're nothing. Yeah, they had the bowling alleys in town. Bowland, they, they, one year they called us up, and they said, you know, we, we need to get rid of a lot of bowling balls that have just been piling up. You know, so they make great toys for the big cats. Where are they going off to? Hey, yeah. you done with this already? Are you done with this? Yeah, I'll let me show you that. Uh, <laughs> you guys done with this? What are you doing? Coming over here and chilling out? Czar over there lounging. I think he's going to get a bowling ball. <laughs> What's up, Sean B? What's up, Sean B? Yeah, beautiful, beautiful animals. <laughs> If you want to come out here and visit, you got to call. You got to give it a got to, a phone call. There's no, it's not open to the public. Private tours only. So here, Rob, this is an example of what, what you got. This is an example of what a lion or a tiger can do to a bowling ball. That's what the, that's what they did to a bowling ball. Yeah. Unbelievable. Wow, <laughs> that's unbelievable. Kawaiachobe Animal Preserve, folks. Look them up online. Follow them on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Yeah, even TikTok. Man. TikTok on TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. I have a staff right now, a wonderful young lady named Monique. Yeah, another one's uh, Rebecca. They, uh, they've been TikToking for me because I don't know how to do that stuff. <laughs> So another another reason I need volunteers is to do all the technical stuff that I have no idea how to do. Hey man, to Thank that. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> it's a special feeling to be so loved that everything comes yep. right up to you. It is awesome. I mean, just being so close to these cats is an incredible feeling. All right, well, we're going to go visit. Uh, let's go see Sabina. Sabina is a Bengal tiger, right, John? Yes, she's a All right, let me, I'm going to come around there yeah. and get a closer look yeah. at her. She's a female, too. So she's female Bengal. Large as the other one. Uh, the females generally don't she's get so as cool. large as the males. Sabina, she is beautiful. I met Sabina when she was a little kitty. When she was a little kitten. 
How much does she weigh now? Um, she's right around 300 pounds. Yeah. 300. Yeah. Now the white tigers, what, they're 500? Yeah, easy 500. Molly's are the biggest one. He's probably right around 550 or close to it. Look at the colorations uh, so on Sabina. Large, but his father was a full, very large uh, Siberian. Oh. And his mother was a, a white uh, female. Um, and the whites generally, genetically, they have like a, a, a along with the white gene, there's a, a size gene attached to it. So, so historically, the white tigers have always been larger than their orange counterparts. What can uh, you tell us about Sabina? Uh, well, Sabina, oh, how old are you? You're, you? Actually, her birthday is in October, I think October 8th. Um, and she will be 10 years old. Wow. Yeah, so she's just a year, a little less than a year younger than the, than the boys. The, the, we call the lion and tiger the boys. The, so it's the boys, the twins, and Sabina. So, And Sabina is yeah. the star of the show. I yeah, mean, she is yeah. definitely the queen of yeah. Kauai Chobi. Yeah. So, yeah, I get, um, we try to get words that are the, for the, or the names for our cats. Um, we try to give them a little bit of an ethnic uh, background uh, that translates to something as well. So, like I said, with the um, with the white tigers, it's older and younger with Milai and Tanju. With Sabina, it's actually a Hindu word that means beautiful. Um, and, and it fits very well because she's probably the prettiest tiger I've ever seen and everybody states it. I mean, if, if you were looking for the perfect looking tiger, you look at the face, it's just beautiful. Um, she's gorgeous, every bit of her, her pattern. Um, she's got a beautiful coat uh, and she's everybody's favorite. She's just beautiful. <laughs> that girl? Huh? That girl? She's very interactive. She's a easy favorite for my volunteers. She loves to play games. Um, she'll run back and forth. Um, I, I know this enclosure is round, but I, I kind of feel like I should have put like a track around it so she could run around in circles uh, and exercise people. She's very energetic. She's probably the most athletic cat that I've ever had. Wow. Um, she loves to play hide and seek. Uh, if you see some of our videos uh, that we post online, um, she's always hiding and seeking with people. Um, and I think they make reference to that a lot of times. So, but yeah, she's just a beautiful tiger. Very she's playful, gorgeous. very interactive, very sweet. And, and you know what's surprising though, is even like during feeding time, a lot of times she'll pass on her food uh, because she just wants to play or, or interact more and she just seen Jim so she's being all playful again <laughs> so Jim Nessie just showed up um, yeah, so this is the home of uh, the white tigers you actually uh, if you go through uh, Rob's archives on his uh, Facebook page or his YouTube page you'll see video of when then they were cubs yep uh, you were out here when they were just running around my backyard yep um, but yeah Malai and Tanju uh, Malai and Tanju uh, right here Where is Malai uh, that means older um, and Tanju means younger brother they are right twins. over here um, so we kind of named them older usually if you if John two. gets closer they'll come yeah. right over to him yeah. you, you won't believe how big these yeah. cats are yeah. I mean they're just Incredible. So again, um, education-wise, we, we, we teach a lot about genetics and uh, uh -huh. recessive genes and why the color variants are there. Uh, but we also, we, we give people an accurate history of the white tiger uh, because a lot of people just have, um, they just buy what the activists throw at them, with, that they're all inbred, they're all uh, non-viable for conservation because their bloodlines are messed up and they don't really exist. A lot of people even try to convince you that they are man-made, which they're not. However, they were only found in India, uh, naturally, uh, in the Bengal population. Um, but you know, now we know that there are no subspecies. The tigers are all the same. Um, what we see in the differences in the different countries is the same thing that you see in race. Uh, so it's just breeding populations that have been separated that look different, the same reason that people do. Um, so we refer to the subspecies now as types, which is basically the same as race based on geography. Um, so in uh, captivity, there's no difference uh, in any of the tigers. Um, and find, in fact, you find a lot of the cover, color variants in other types of tigers now as well because of the breeding that has been done. But I will want, I do want to point out that 
a lot of genetic studies have been done. Um, you can uh, look up Brian Davis in uh, A&M University, who's been cataloging the big cats for, uh, especially the tigers, for several years. Uh, if you want to get an accurate account of, of the genetics of the, the captive tiger population, uh, look him up. But the fact is, the, the, the captive population of tigers is more diverse than the wild population at this point. Um, so realistically, it's it's the problem that we have is with the wild population. It's not with the fact that we have so many. The fact that we have so many in captivity is probably what's going to save the tigers in the long run. Um, so if you were if you're talking about genetic diversity being what's what makes them more viable for conservation, then the captive tiger is more viable for conservation because it's more diverse. So I'll put it that way. Um, so you know, at this point, there are a lot of color variations. Uh, you, you can look up the work of Joseph Marcan in northern Florida. He's got a lot of very different colorations. There are several facilities across the country. A lot of work was done with uh, Siegfried and Roy as well. Uh, but make no mistake about it, these are not mongrels, and they're not uh, non-viable. They're very genetically sound um, tigers that, uh, that could end up being the saving grace. However, I, I would like to also, also say that the problem has not been solved in the wild. The population is not increasing. It's actually, uh, it's basically in a stalemate. It hasn't, uh, it hasn't changed in the past decade or two. Uh, in fact, the other big cats, other than the tiger, are still decreasing in numbers. Um, so realistically, we need to stop talking about where they belong and start talking about whether or not we want them to exist, because that's reality. Existence over ec extinction is basically the bottom line. Uh, that's where our hearts are for existence over extinction. Um, I don't. I wish that uh, we could put them all back in the wild and, and believe that they would all survive. But um, the current state of the world, it's not going to happen. You know, we got a lot of work to do before that's even possible. So until then, we just have to make sure that we keep a good, healthy population in, in captivity. So I'm trying to approach this with. A view of science, I want to give everybody a different perspective. I'm not, I am, I'm very careful to say this and I want people to understand. I am not advocating captive wildlife. I'm just saying that, that you, we are being misled as to what is actually going on in the pi private sector. And I want people to understand there's a lot of important work going on and don't be fooled by the agendas that are being put in front of you. So, um, so it's not about me advocating, it's not about me defending, it's about reality. The reality is science says these are more diverse than the wild populations. Science says that if things don't change in the wild, they're not going to exist. Science says we have a future if we keep a good, healthy population here. So, Amen. I'm done preaching about that. <laughs>